we're going to be going over seven signs of PDA and seven tips for parents with kids with PDA. You can have autism and not have PDA, and you can also have PDA and not autism. So, my husband and I have five kids, and our two youngest are autistic. Twenty-six. Here's a point a seven. This video is about PDA. We're not talking about the one public affection one. We're talking about pathological demand avoidance. I don't like the name, it's not my favorite. And if you've never heard of this, then sit back and relax because it's a thing, it's real, and it happens in our family. So here's some examples and tips from our home to yours. I want you. The first sign is something that happens in our family a lot, and that's your child may not like praise. This child that I'm thinking of right now, who will not be named, loves being praised except when they're doing something that I've demanded of them, like a command. For example, if they're doing the dishes, maybe they put off doing the dishes for a while. They know that expectation is there. They were involved in the decision making as a family when we were divvying out responsibilities and chores and they say, okay, I'll do the dishes. But then the next day comes and they are finally doing the dishes and they're not happy about it. It is not a good thing for me to come in in that situation as a mom, as a parent, and be like, thank you so much for doing the dishes. You do such a good job on the dishes when you, no, that would not be good. That person would feel more anxiety because I'm pointing out that they're actually doing what I wanted them to do. And so they might even stop doing it because I complimented them. So if that sounds familiar to you and that type of situation scenario happens all the time in your house, then your child might have PDA. And this, this one has a lot to do with communication. Communication is such an important thing with parents and children, with family. I feel like a lot of problems and a lot of animosity and hurt feelings come from when you don't communicate very well. And we have a free PDF in the link in the description below called 10 Ways to Help Your Child Communicate. So be sure to get that, it's absolutely free. The second sign that your child might have PDA is if you see them repetitively controlling other people. Like even in a play situation, this happens at our house, the, the person that is playing will no longer wanna come play. And I'm like, why, why don't you wanna play? And I observed one time and I'm like, oh, I see why children don't wanna play with you anymore. It's because you just tell people what to do. With PDA, there is anxiety with a certain expectation. Now, not in a manipulative way, but more of a things need to go perfect, so I'm going to tell people what to do, which might seem ironic because they don't like being told what to do, but yet they're telling other people what to do, but it's still a sign of PDA. If you have PDA, please put in the comments, how does it make you feel when someone demands something of you and you feel that anxiety? What does that anxiety feel like for you? I've heard that it feels heavy, like a burden like it's hard to breathe or it's more like depression. I've also heard that it's more of a panic anxiety, like you're in fight or flight. And so some kids might fight, they might argue with you, they might get super mad and your face and bossy, or they might fly, they might run away, they might just ignore you. And there are different ways to respond, but um, all those different ways are actually signs of PDA. But the important thing to know, it's not just a child or a person saying, I don't want to be told what to do. It's someone who has anxiety. So they're exhibiting different behaviors that's anxiety driven. And it stems from a need for control. When expectations are placed on them, they have a difficult time with their anxiety. The third sign that your child might have PDA is if you see them work really hard on something, even for a while, and then they just quit and never do it again. It has to do with perfectionism. It has to do with anxiety because of the expectation that they put on themselves or that they feel other people put on them. We've seen this a lot. Even if my child works really hard on something, uh, puts a lot of time and effort into, into a certain skill or, or a certain activity, and then they feel like they just can't live up to what they've been doing, it's too hard, then they just quit. And they're fine with it. And they're fine with starting something new. The next sign is if your child repetitively will avoid new things that are really uncertain. They might even be really excited about it at first, but then they're like, I don't wanna try that. 
it's brand new. It's scary. I might fail. It's that, it's that um, feeling of I can't reach that expectation. I can't do that demand because of my anxiety. For example, your child might get an A on a test. Then they have this expectation like they have to get an A next time, but it's going to be too hard. They just run away from the test and don't take it. That's the type of behavior that can happen um, because of that anxiety that they feel. The next sign is they may have a difficult time with authority. So this might look like, you know, a really young child might kind of act like an adult and might want to be treated with the same respect as an adult or as their teacher or someone, someone in authority, which I think is a good thing. That's actually one of my pet peeves is when like I go to a classroom and I feel like the adults are treating the kids like they're second class citizens or something because they're younger and they're kids and they're still learning. And I just feel like, man, don't you realize that when you treat a child with respect, you're not only teaching them how they need to be treated, but you're also teaching them by example of how to show someone respect. I love this because we were actually talking about this in our ASD club. We have autistic adults and parents with autistic kids and we come together weekly on a video chat. Click the link in the description below and I can't wait to see you on the next call. And if you're interested in one-on-one -on -one coaching, we have a link for that in the description as well. The next sign is because you've demanded something of your child, they don't want to do it. Hear the word because. Because you've made a demand or a request or command, they now don't want to do it. If at your house, if your child is planning on doing something or even excited about it, and then you say, oh, you have to do that, and then all of a sudden they change their mind, then that is a sign of PDA. The last sign is they may not be able to do a chore or a responsibility or an expectation that they once were able to do. A child without PDA will get into a routine and be used to a certain chore and then just do it because they're used to it. But a child with PDA who might used to be doing some demands, some commands, some chore every day, one day they might just not be able to do it. Please comment below on what you think about this list. Is there another sign or another tip that you'd like to add? Please put it down below because I know a lot of people will be looking at these comments and looking for your personal experiences about PDA and how it feels for you. So please put down anything that we've missed and that you really want to include. You never know who you might bless just by commenting. And here are seven tips to help parent a child with PDA. The first tip I want to do if you have a child with PDA is give choices. It seems very simple, but the more choices that you can give them, the more power and control that they feel in their life. When my autistic kids wake up in the morning, I love to ask them what shirt they want. I know it's a simple thing, but it is a big deal to him. He really enjoys it and it helps him have a better morning. My four-year-old has to pick his cereal in the morning. I can't ever pick it even though I know his favorite one. He will choose a different one. If I said, oh, I know you like this one and start pouring it, he'll automatically be like, no, I want this one. And so giving him choices is imperative for him to actually eat. PDA is often related to autism, ADHD, and perfectionism. There's some overlapping um, traits and things like that, but you can have autism and not have PDA, and you can also have PDA and not autism. So just keep that in mind. The second one is plan ahead with your child and give them a say in what's going to happen. So it's similar to the first by giving them choices, but this is more in depth. You sit down with them and you ask for their opinions and you ask for what they really want and hear their feelings and really help them feel seen and heard. Because if they feel seen and heard, if they feel that you understand them, that you get them, raising a child with PDA is gonna be so much easier because they'll feel like you're on their side, which hopefully you are because we need to be on our kid's side because if we're not, who is going to be? We need to be advocating for them. We need to be helping them gain the most independence and autonomy in their life as possible. When we've done this, it's always been really good to sit down together as a family in our family room and we will ask our kids questions like, how do you feel about the rules in the house? Do you feel like any of them are unfair? We discuss things like jobs and chores in the house and expectations and behavior and things like that. When the kids feel like they not only know what to expect, but they've been a part of the decision making, then they can really own it and feel a, an important part of their family. 
and I'm writing a book right now for parents who have autistic kids. It's for you to help you build strong relationships with your children and find joy in the journey. If you're interested in that book, you can check it out in the link in the description below. The next tip is turning a responsibility or a chore into a game. If you can gamify something, it is a lot more fun and it's a lot easier for kids, especially kids with PDA. I actually do this with my three older kids, Mark, Benson, and Marie. When we first decided that we were gonna sell our house, move into an RV and visit all the national parks as a family. Yes, five kids in an RV and two are autistic. It was super fun. We have lots of videos. We still post regularly, so please consider subscribing. This video here is when I turned a really huge chore into a game. And the job was that each child had to go through every single thing they owned and either put it in the donate pile, put it in the storage pile, or put it in the trash pile. And then they had this little tiny box that they could put their things in that could go in the RV when we went on this big trip. We have an amazing community here. I personally have learned so much from the autistic adults who have been brave enough to comment and tell us their stories in the comments. So please, Go in the comments and look and read what these amazing people are sharing about how it feels for them to experience PDA. And please be kind. If you hate us, we might not delete it. If you hate on others, they were gonna delete it. So you're just not gonna do it. It's not worth your time. The next tip for raising a child with PDA is ask questions. So instead of saying, hey, brush your teeth, you could say, hey, what's next for getting ready for bed? One night, I remember realizing, I think I give commands way too often. And so I I did this exercise, it's like a parenting exercise for myself. I decided the whole rest of the evening, the whole night, um, while I was getting ready for bed, I would only ask questions and not give any demands. And it was kind of a stretch because I had to be super creative on how I parented and turning all these demands into questions gave the children more autonomy. They got them thinking instead of just having them do what I wanted them to do. And a lot of times it didn't even work that way. The next one is one that I do most of the time. So most of the time if I see one of my kids having a hard time um, with this anxiety that comes, with, comes from having PDA, um, this is the, the one I use the most, mo most often. And that's, I will intervene and I will start helping them. And if, you might think, oh, that's not good parenting. You're doing it for them. No, but um, I'm still expecting them to help, but I am trying to lift a burden from them. And I've noticed with my kids with PDA that even just starting a project is the hardest part. I literally just did this last week. Um, this child did not want to start and was very upset and was showing anxiety. Um, and so I recognize that as PDA, I recognize that this child wasn't being malicious. They weren't being rebellious. They weren't. They were not being lazy. They were having anxiety. Some things I gave the child choices on the computer and we started the project together. It was a slideshow and I said, hey, you do this slideshow, you can do this one, this one, what, what, what do you like? And then all of a sudden it was a simple choice instead of this huge burden and heavy responsibility, right? This big expectation. And so that child just picked which slide show they liked. Oh, like, okay. And we put it in Canva and we started working on it. And I did most of the work at first. And then I just was asking questions. What do you want to do here? What do you want to do here? All right, let's go find a picture of that. Which one do you think is good? And then about a quarter of the way through, I handed the computer to the child and they finished it on their own. The purpose of this exercise is to help build their own confidence and their own independence, to be able to do hard things if they need to, and then also to know when to take a break and when it's okay to say, no, I'm not gonna do that this week, you know, I'll, I'll do it next week. The next one is kind of similar to that one, but it's empowering your child. So empowerment, what does that look like for you and your child? How do you empower them? How do you inspire them? Each child is going to be empowered and inspired and motivated in a different way. Most of the time, children with PDA are not motivated by charts with earning rewards. If, if you are, and if your child is, then great, good job. 
but from what I've seen and from what I've heard from people's firsthand experiences and how they feel, a lot of times that's like, oh, I have to put another star on or I have to earn this or I need to get this reward and then it just kind of can add to that expectation and make it even harder. And the last tip for helping your child with PDA is identifying triggers. Are there certain times of the day that are harder? Are there certain situations that are more difficult? Maybe your child has a harder time with demands when they're hungry and right before dinner or when they're tired and right before bed. Maybe their anxiety because of their PDA is even worse because they've been spending the whole day at school and now they're back from school and they're exhausted and they're done listening to people telling them what to do and they just need a break. Here's the difference between speech delay and autism and here's our autism playlist. And remember, if you have an autistic child, you're in good company.